Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top Ping. Today is the final test. I don't know how high on the list it is, but everybody says, what about cheese steaks on the Pit Boss griddle? Can you do it? The surface is different. What about the chopping? What about this? What about that? We've just done the cheese steak on the Blackstone for the inaugural cook. So I did want to do the same recipe. Today, the idea is cheese steak, but we're making a Mexican one. All right, I think the biggest problem that people have or the skepticism, the reluctance. Uh, reluctance? That's close. Is, golly, it's howling today. I'm freezing. Is you can't get that chop method on the ceramic coated pit boss. So this is what we've done. We went to our butcher today. I bought one choice ribeye. And I said, listen, I want this stuff to look like roast beef. I want it shaved thin as possible, but I still want to be able to have some strings to where when I put it on the pit boss, um, I still have to have the idea of chopping it up because I want to replicate that for you guys. Not a problem. So I've always said your best friend in the grocery store is the butcher. They can do a lot of stuff for you. So basically they've taken this and made it thinner than what I can produce with my knife. Okay. We got a little cheese dip. Oh, I love my cheese dip. I don't care what you say, I like it. Bell peppers, I've got a seeded and pitted sliced jalapeno, some avocado, which is unnecessary, but man, they were perfect today. Some onion, all right? Or our seasoning, black pepper and garlic, chili powder and cumin, a little paprika. I got this on one of the things that Pitball sent me, and I actually like it really well. This has some heat to it, so I'm gonna substitute this instead of like a red pepper, okay? And then we got lucky today. We found some tor tortas. I think they're called tortas. Could be wrong. Pretty close. Put all those on these buns right here. All right. Oh, oh, really quick. I just put just a touch of brown sugar, just a touch of brown sugar to knock off some of the bitterness from the spices we're using. All right. Let's go. Ooh, boy. Ooh, that feels good today. Whew. So look. 400, 475, somewhere through there. So we're looking pretty good. If you're worried about the cheese steak on the pit boss, spread your meat out a good amount of ways, right? So it doesn't start steaming itself on the griddle. Make sense? All right, cheese sauce is going down. It's getting warmed up. Right before we season our meat, we're just gonna start with vegetables. Some onion, bell pepper, and jalapeno. All right, I've mentioned this before. A good gauge for your seasoning without overdoing it is imagine your steak on a plate and season your steak. So I'm making a mix right here. I know I want heavy on black pepper. Your seasonings are gonna blow away. Yep. Chili powder, paprika. I like the cumin. A little bit more than that than normal. Garlic powder. And let's hit it with some of this right here. You guys can see the red pepper flakes in there too. All right, so this is my spice mix. I'm lucky to have a house after this wind stops blowing. Whoo, we have to film in between the big gusts. <laughs> All right, I've got my vegetables cooked just the way I like them, just a little bit overcooked. I'm gonna hit just a little bit of oil. You guys see that we're smoking? That's what we're looking for. And here we go. This is what I was talking about, not putting all the meat on there at once, letting it have the chance to breathe. Smell that beef flavor. All right, come back into your seasonings. Season as much as you like. Remember, when the cheese steak, it's all about 
steak and cheese. Now, whatever else you decide to put in it, that's up to you. But everybody said you can't do a cheese steak on the Pimp Boss because you can't chop the meat. It's got char on the meat. It's got char on the meat. It's got char on the meat. The meat's shredded. Looks like a cheesesteak to me. All right. There we go. I'm just going to put some of this Mexican cheese blend in it. You guys make it the way you want to. Got to kind of hold everything together. So cold outside, her cheese is already hardened up. Hit it on the top. Hit it on the top. Or I guess that's the bottom. Now let that bun get in there and steam, just like you would on a, on a cheese steak. I don't have to taste this to know how damn good it's gonna be. <laughs> but if you have any hesitations at all, and you're gonna comment below and say, you can't do this, you can't do that. I would just say, keep an open mind. So far, it has done every test we've put it to. Crispy hash browns, check. Big breakfast, double check. Smash burgers with that mallard crust, Maillard crust, check. Philly steak and cheese, or cheese steak, check. And on top of that, we seared some pork chops, and I showed you that sear on all, every single one of those pork chops. All right. Whew. Oh man, that looks good. Look at that crust. All right, now that they're over here, go ahead and just top it off a little bit more. With that cheese sauce. Don't be stingy. This is what you worked hard for. This is the whole part of cheese steak. Oh God. It doesn't matter what you put on it. Cheese steak is cheese steak. Three ingredients, steak, cheese, and bread. Whatever you put in it, that's up to you. Don't ever say the pit boss <laughs> Patting yourself on the back. <laughs> Damn, that's good. Oh, we didn't have that more often. It's good. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, make something similar, make this exact recipe, just make something. Hit us up on Facebook, or you can find us at the Girdle Group by the Flat Top King. On Facebook. Please. Facebook group. Facebook group. Yeah, they know.